Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing a video following my last video, but before I start, <coughs> excuse me, I just thought I would give you an update regarding my new venture. So if you want to follow any details regarding my new venture, you can go to Facebook, www.facebook. So let's just bring this. I brought my camera a bit closer so you can see. So www.facebook. Oh, that's it. And I'll just get rid of it. Dot Facebook. So if you go to Facebook, I'm using the browser here. So if I go to Facebook, you'll see that because these are the ones that I use a lot, you'll either see my own profile, which is Tracy Evans, or my group, Tracy Evans Boutique Designs, which is the same book I had, which is the same group I had before, but I just I've just changed the name. Once you come into the group, you'll see that I've now got my own branding. So my own logo, etc., that I'll be using in my packaging, in my um sort of posts etc and with my group as well just so you can see that now if you want any updates you can either follow my group or you can follow my personal page uh, Tracy Evans where you'll see uh, pictures of my artwork and updates as well however the group will have more details the group will have uh, posts where the, my lovely followers will share their artwork it is packed with inspiration now both myself and my admin uh, keep this a safe environment and a friendly environment about our creative journey and that's all it's about the main focus needs to be my designs whether they're my designs from all and create or my designs from my own shop so then if you go to the app, so you go to the Facebook app, you can do exactly the same. You can follow there, Tracy Evans Boutique Designs, Create, Share and Inspire, and it comes up. So that's with your app. And the group is the best way to follow me with my new venture. Now, I've been busy in the background. I've had lots to learn uh, in the process. Um, lots of things about manufacturing and software and uploading and and for this poor old lady here it takes me a bit of time to learn everything I'm a slow learner but that's fine so at the moment I have sent some designs into the manufacturer and I will have six stamps um, released um, I'm waiting for the samples to arrive this week and once the samples arrive and I've tested them, I'll then be placing my order and then they'll be on offer to you as well. I'll obviously I'll obviously share the designs. I'll share the links to my page where you can purchase them and I'll share the links everywhere. If you're ever unsure of anything, if you go to anything. So, for instance, this is my design team where I, I introduced my design team. It doesn't matter what you go on. Um, that's probably not the best. Let's go Tracy Evans Boutique Designs. I'm trying to find, I'm sure I've put a post on today, yes. So here you can see I'm advertising a workshop. And if you click on that workshop, you'll see, let's make that a bit larger, you'll see that my email is along here. And if you've ever got any questions, you can just email me there. Or you can go to Facebook and you can direct message me. And what I mean by that is if you go to my profile, there will be, obviously not for me, but for you, you'll be able to find a message tab where you can message me. Um, you click that message tab and then once I receive your message, it comes through here on my messenger. So you can just message me there. So if you've ever got any questions, I'm always there. If there's once the website goes live, if there's any issues, again, just message me because we can always sort it out between us. So that's my update on what's happening regarding my new release. So let's move this out of the way. I will keep you informed every step of the way. So let's create a project now. So in my previous video, which had a wonderful response, thank you so much. 
And going forward, I'm going to be using, it's not going to be about using stacks of products. I'm going to be using stamps because I adore stamps. I've been a stamper for nearly 30 years, so I will never move away from stamping. Now, this was the card we created in the previous video that's on my YouTube now. And we created that in the previous video. And if you remember, I did a mop up of the ink that was on there sort of I pressed it onto here and picked that ink up and this was the second generation print and again I've got a lovely print there that I can use so what I want to do <clears throat> is show you how you can have a similar idea but make it look a little bit different so let's just move that out of the way where do we move that no idea Let's plonk that there. Now, for me, it's just deciding whether I want to add any stenciling in the background. I've got one where I haven't added any stenciling. What do we think? Um, yes, let's add a stencil. <coughs> so grab your stencils and have a look at what you, takes your fancy. I've got my stencil designs from All and Create. I keep them in wallets just so that I've got them somewhere I can see quite easily. I can't believe I'm going to have stamps with my logo on and everything. And they'll, oh, it's soon to be so strange. Right, so I'm going to use twisting and turning. So let's do that twisting and turning. Now I did promise that when I, well, I've already started my own venture, that I would still use my products from All and Create because at the end of the day, those are my designs. I've still poured my heart and soul into those and they still mean so much to me, whether they're through All and Create or whether they're under my own name. They're, they're all just as precious to me. So I'm using my stencil 157, twisting and turning. And that's the one I'm going to use. And we're going to try and stay tidy. That'll be impossible. So I'm just going to grab some white embossing powder. And what I'd like to say is I've instantly started different than I was going to. <clears throat> so I've instantly started differently. Let's just grab... Um, let's grab a piece of cut and dry foam. Now this is cut and dry foam. Um, if you can't get this, don't worry, just use a sponge. That's absolutely fine. Just use a sponge piece of sponge from the kitchen as long as it's clean that's absolutely fine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place the twisting and turning stencil it's entirely up to you which way you have that stencil now before you use your versamark which is my sticky ink pad before you use that i would recommend that if like me you use your stencils quite frequently and you don't know what's on there I would just recommend give them a little bit of a clean because look it's surprising what comes off there and if that's going to detract from the colour that you're using you don't really want to put that on there so let's just give that a dry and going forward I'm going to be in my own new venture, my priority is to offer education. Like it's always been, that's never changed. However, it's going to be a massive priority that when I release stamps, so my first release will be six stamps, but they won't. it's not going to be an expensive bundle and you can buy them individually um, because they are just A7 and A6s. Eventually, I may have some A8s as well that are smaller stamps just so those of you that have got tight budgets you can still be involved by using some smaller stamps now going forward i am going to be so for instance my first release will be six stamps and i will be using those six stamps continually like i do in my, with my previous releases from all and create however it's going to be a little bit different for me because my releases are going to be slow very slow and steady and I'm going to be concentrating on my first release very strongly so that we don't move away from it too quickly. And it might be that 
you know, whenever I decide to release something after the six stamps, I may only release one stamp, but it's going to be very slow and steady. So for me, the education is important and my workshops will also be visible on the site that I sell my stamps on just so that you can see them there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Versamark watermark stamp pad. Now, because it's my own venture, because it's my own YouTube, I've got no deadlines. I've got nobody telling me that I've got to do things a certain way. I can do things how I always want to do. I want to take care, take time. I want to go from the very basics. I will go into very into a lot of detail um, so that the, there's no misunderstandings of how you can use your products. However, it's not going to be about chucking everything all the time at every card. Sometimes it might be clean and simple cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a Versamark Watermark stamp pad, which is a sticky ink pad, which allows you to emboss on it. So I'm going to take... Now, what I could do is I could simply go like this over my stencil. The only problem with that is... You won't get in, let's bring this here, let's move that up there. You won't get into the fine areas. So what I'm doing is I'm pre pressing my cut and dry foam or your sponge, whatever you're using, and I'm just going to press that sticky ink just over the stencil. So just press that over the stencil. And I find this an easier way to do it rather than sort of pressing like this because it just misses some of the fine detail and for me if you're being creative you're enjoying the process you're not rushing you're not getting ratty with it you know you're just enjoying what you're doing and sometimes when we when we've had a holiday you know like a break over christmas we feel a little bit stale and we sort of can't get going again. So for me, sometimes doing something simple just gets me going again. So I've got my hand still on the stencil and I'm just lifting this up so I can see. And I can see that there's some stenciling there. You're saying like, I can hardly see anything, Tracy, but there is a little bit of stenciling there and it's wet ink. Now, let me grab a piece of copy of paper. Now, the good thing about this sticky ink is that you don't have to worry about it drying. Now, the other thing is sometimes you'll see me walk away in a video and you don't hear anything. That's because I might reach for something because I'm inspired in a different way. Now, my videos going forward are warts and all. So that means I am not doing posh editing and putting anything posh on there. It's the real me. That's what I want to do going forward. I want to be the real me and show you the real videos, where it goes wrong, where it goes right, where I go with the flow. I want to show you it all. I want to be different than everybody else because there's no point as all being the same. So what I'm going to do is just sprinkle my embossing powder. And instantly, let me just... As you can see, I've got that beautiful embossing on there. Now, I've been very lucky because I haven't handled this card very much. It's a clean piece of card that I've cut just before I went live with the video. Now, if you've got a piece of card that you've had in your collection, you know, you've had it in your drawer, but you want to use it because you want to make sure that your products get used. If you've had it in the drawer and you don't know how frequently it's been touched... It's very, oh, it's very important, bear with me. Do you know what else is important? That your cupboard is tidy. So I've got three heat tools and the wires are just intermingled. What a mess. So this is why, for instance, if somebody's editing a video, they will edit out the fact that obviously I'm hunting in there for my heat tool. 
and they will edit out that everything drops on the floor. That's not me. What I want to show is what happens when you really create. So let's say that you picked up this piece of card, as I was saying before, out of your drawer and you don't know how many times you've handled the card. Then I would just wipe over with an anti-static bag because then you will just make sure that the embossing powder just sticks to where you've inked with that Versamark ink. So I'm now going to give that a heat just to melt that embossing powder. And there's no point me going straight to this until that heat tool is heated up because you're just wasting your time wafting it and there's no heat within the heat tool. So, and that's what I mean about warts and all. I want you to see that sometimes we all do the same things. We go in an arc, we go into our cupboards and everything falls over because you've got three heat tools. It's, it, that's, it's just what it is, that's, that's normal life. So let's just heat that up. And also, we'll have some laughs along the way, because there'll be times when I make a complete mess, and we can have a laugh about it, because going forward, I don't want you to get frustrated with your hobby, because it's not as perfect as somebody else's. Let me tell you, nobody's perfect. and. Artwork, you know, it depends who's viewing the, the artwork. Everybody sees something different in everybody's artwork. And that's the joy of artwork. The fact that you all see different things. Somebody might like your design, somebody might not. It doesn't matter. Don't get hung up on who likes it and who doesn't. The main priority going forward is that we enjoy our hobby and it brings us pleasure and more importantly, that we use our products. So I'm just heating this up. Now I just put the camera a little bit closer, just so that you can see the embossing. And sometimes you'll see me tilt the card, that's mainly because the light, it's, I've got a lovely window in front of me, but sometimes because it's white on white, you can't actually see where you're embossing. The other thing is, just remember, I'm holding the card up. The card is very hot, so don't go and burn your fingers. But the reason I'm holding the card up is I can see if I've missed any embossing. See, once you've heated it all, you can see very easily where you might have missed. Right. So, there's no point going on here with ink because obviously you can't because you haven't got, you know, touchy, you can't put your hands through the screen. But this is very warm. There's no point me going on there with my ink pads when it's really hot, because all that do is dry out the ink pad really, and there's just no point. But what you can see there is a beautiful, beautiful glossy finish, which is really nice. Now, let's say that I missed a little bit of embossing on here, and it had melted, but there was little bits that weren't. Well, all that would happen is your colour would sink into that area where you haven't got the embossing to resist the ink. But that's fine also because that gives you a different effect. Don't always think because something isn't perfect that it isn't right. We're going to embrace the imperfections. Okay, so I've got my ink pads all here. I always recommend that you grab your ink pads ready. So I've got my pile of ink pads here. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think I use the bottom colour. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colours. And I'm going to start with the picked raspberry. Now, when we did this card in the previous video, we used a, a brush to apply it. So let's do it a different way. So let me just place that there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use my picked raspberry 
And what I want you to do is grab your ink pad and sort of tilt it so that it's sort of, you, you're grabbing this edge here of the ink pad. You're sort of just pressing that edge, this bit of the ink pad here onto your card. And what you're going to do is just And then what I'm trying to do is show you several ideas. So there's the pink. Then I'm going to take my spice marmalade or any orange that you've got. And what you're going to do then is take your orange. And I'm just, it's this edge here I'm just using to apply the ink. Then I've got twisted citron. Or if you don't like twisted citron, you use a different colour. Then I'm going to take cracked pistachio. I love the cracked pistachio colour. Cracked pistachio. Salty ocean. Just hoping my husband's going to answer the door. Bear with me a second. It's now going to go quiet. So now you will have seen that the video went quiet. Now, welcome to real life. So let me just tell you the conversation. Before I came upstairs, I said to my husband, can you listen out for the door? I've got a parcel being collected by Royal Mail. Yes, he says, no problem at all. So here I am recording my video and I can hear him outside in the garden talking to his cousin who put some feed down on the lawn and he's not heard the door. So hence, I've run downstairs to answer the door so that the parcel can be picked up. Welcome to real life. Right, let's get back to it. So, I've used my salty ocean and then I'm going to use wilted violet. Again, sort of the edge of the ink pad. And let's just place there. And I've kept them all in the same order if I want to apply them again. But doesn't that look lovely? As a simple technique, if you don't know how to get going for the new year, nice, simple technique. Now, what you've got there is you've got ink lying on there and it's it's got that pigment line on there if i just show you can you see the beads here that's beads of ink just lying on the top now if i take a little bit of kitchen roll and just a little bit of water and what i can do is i can just wipe over you don't even need much water, to be honest. Now, if you just do it like this, with no water, all that you're going to do is just remove the layer that's just there on the top. With a bit of water, you're going to remove the colour and it'll appear more white. But you do need to make sure that you use a clean piece of kitchen roll. There's no point going on there with a piece of kitchen roll that's got loads of colour on because you're not going to get that white, that pop of white. And the embossing resists the ink. So then we've got that in the white. So you can leave it like that and isn't it beautiful? And also by using that little bit of moisture on here, it means that that pigment just isn't just lying on the surface. Now, you can leave it like that if you want. No problem at all. Or 
like me, you can give it a little bit of a spritz just to activate the ink, which makes it a little bit brighter. And then you can just leave that on one side to dry a little bit. Now, let's bring another one in. So, <clears throat> I did another background in exactly the same way, but without the embossing. So in other words, I just went, let's grab a piece of scrap card. just move this out of the way so what I did was I just had my four and a half I didn't tell you the size of the card did I so this card is four and a half inches by six and a half inches and it's pink frog smooth card now the, what I've did was I did one where I just added the color like this and went up exactly the same as that without the embossing so I just literally added the color just like I'm doing now In exactly the same way as before but with no embossing on there salty ocean let's just keep those in order and then the wilted violet so i'm just showing you a smaller version on here look how juicy that purple is some ink pads are juicier than others so that's all I did on this one here. And what I did was I spritzed with water to activate the colour. Let's move this in place. So I spritzed it with water and then I've added some cling film here just so that you can see that. And really you need to let that dry a little bit longer because I think I'll be able to tip that up. It's still got a little bit of moisture. The moisture's not gone through the card because it's 300 GSM, good quality pink frog smooth card. And what I've done is I've added and crumpled up some cling film just to add it to here. Now, it works normally really well on watercolor card when you do this because the watercolor card, you know, it reacts really well to water. Um, so we'll just leave that a little bit longer and see if there's any reaction. But what I want to show you is, let me just dab that up a bit. What I want to show you is, you've got this look here, that you've got there, and you've got this look here, which all came from this card in my previous video, which you'll find on YouTube again, just the video before this one. So when you do a technique there are always ways to use that technique in a slightly different way so this gives me another background which is absolutely beautiful and I adore that so let's just mop up some of our ink now I spritzed it with water and then it gives me a little bit of oxidization still gives me that white but it gives me some of that oxidization by spritzing it with water. So it gives me oxidization here, here, sort of here. In other words, oxidization is a very posh word, but it's like cloudy. There you go. It sort of gives you that effect, but it's a lovely background. So what I'm going to do is give that a little dry. So if we give that a bit of a dry. Now, you cannot dry it too much the reason being you've got that embossing on there so what you don't want to do is heat the card again and it loses that glossiness you don't want it to lose that glossiness which will be such a shame so let's just bend that i love the oxide inks not picked any stamp Got my cling film in the way. Um, let's move the baskets. Now I keep a lot of my stamps in these white baskets. So I've got my A6 in a basket, I've got my A7 in a basket. They're all in 
in different baskets. Which ones do I fancy? Yes, shall we have that one? Yes. So I've got all my A6s in a basket. All my A7s in a basket and my A5s are on the shelf. So I use these wallets to keep them in and I'll keep my designs in exactly the same. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using Miracle Growth and that is stamp set 995. And I want to use this stamp here, this sort of sort of type of Daisy Echinacea type of sort of, not Daisy Tracy, that kind of, of floral. So we'll just take our stamp. I think we can do that with an A7. Now, when your stamps, you can feel, because you use them a lot, there's like a bit of gritty um, residue on there. You can either wash them with a tiny bit of soapy water or I can just use a little bit of a wipe and these are just wipes made out of water. Just give that a bit of a clean because it's just got those that residue on there and it just sticks beautifully again. So let's grab a piece of scrap card. I keep saying, I keep saying scrap card and then all the pieces of card are massive. Going to use my Nocturne black ink because I like to use this ink. It's permanent, but it has a good open time, which means it stays wetter longer. I'm going to ink that up with the black. And I do love florals because they just don't date. So I think I'm going to do this twice. So just stamp that. That's once. I just love how it comes out. And I love this floral because you only need a touch of colour and it just looks wonderful. I would just add another floral. And I do need to cut those out because I haven't cut them out. But I'm very relaxed about cutting them out. It's funny, it's very freeing, very freeing not having deadlines. It's just a lovely feeling. I tell you what, I'm going to have to get another chair, I think, because this one's driving me mad. Right. So let's just Whew, cut that a bit fine. I like to just use a smaller piece of card to cut my floral out. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to use too much product. So like I did in the other video, I'm just going to use my oxides. I'm not going to use too much. So I'm going to use Villainous Potion. And let's move this out of the way. And Wilted Violet, like so, like we did before. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Wilted Violet. And I only need a little bit of that colour. So just spritzing a little bit of water. You can see here, and I've just got water above. Now we always have a piece of kitchen roll, just so that I don't over flood my brush. I've placed that into the water to make sure it's clean. And I'm going to pick up some of the wilted violet. So I'm just... What I'm doing is I'm coating the brush with that colour and then I'm going to just, can you see how much moisture is on there? I don't want too much moisture. And then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of the wilted violet. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't know what make these are, but I am going to eventually invest in some really good quality, super fine brushes, mainly because it's worth it. They don't degrade, they keep their quality, they keep their point. So I'm probably going to invest in just a couple 
and you watch me lose them. The reason I've never invested in super expensive brushes, one reason only, Tracy is terrible for leaving the brushes with adhesive on. I'm, I'm absolutely dreadful. And then you go and you've got these lovely expensive brushes that are rock hard. I know there's products you can get that I think you can sort of revitalise some. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of the wilted violet. And initially, until I've added the touches of white, it doesn't look much at all, but it will. So I've just added the wilted violet. And what you can see is I'm sort of leaving a little area white because that'll look like a shine when we've finished. <clears throat> so now we've still got the wilted violet. I'm just going to do the other floral just at the same time. And I love it because this floral is so easy to colour. It's nothing complicated. And when it's cut out, it looks really effective. There we go. Let's just do the... I can't wait till the light nights, you know, so we start getting longer days because you can fit so much more in. I've still not added any more water to my brush. The minute you flood your brush with water, you've got nowhere to go because it just floods everywhere and you don't want to do that. So that is my wilted violet. I'm then going to go to the villainous potion. Take that villainous potion. Now, this is a lot darker, so I'm just going to rinse my brush that gives me a wash then. But I'm just going to, so I've just washed that in water, and I'm just going to pick up that darker villainous potion colour. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the darker colour. And it just gives it a little bit more depth. Now, on the previous card, let's keep bringing the previous card in. You can see that depth just on there with the dark. On this floral, you don't need to be quite as sort of precise because it's a very sort of small floral and you don't have to worry too much. And again, once you cut that out, it will look so much better. So just getting a little bit of the darker color and just adding a little bit of that darker color. just to give it a little bit more depth. And when you cut it out, it looks a hundred times better. So we'll just rinse that out. We'll just leave the brush on one side, mop that water up, and we'll just give these a cut out. So what I'm going to do is just leave a little bit of a white border. Now, if I pull this card towards me and you don't see it in camera, I do apologise. The reason for that is when I'm cutting out, I hold the card quite close to my body. So it's quite alien to suddenly hold it so that you can see it in camera. So I'm leaving a white border, just a tiny white border just so that that pops a little bit and it's definitely worth it. I don't always leave a white border, but it does make everything pop. Particularly if you've got little petals like this. 
and you can see that I'm moving my card rather than my scissors. I find that easier. I sort of get a bit of a flow going with the movement and it makes it a whole lot simpler for me personally. And I just sort of twist the, the top just so that it looks a little bit jagged. Now, obviously, if you don't want to watch two florals being cut out, you can quite easily fast forward. I can't believe after I'd spoke to my husband about making sure that he was available for the parcels that he is. Honestly, you can't make it up in our house. It happens every single time. I'll say to my son, don't shout when you're on your game because I'm recording a video. And what does he do five minutes later? Shouts. Honestly. It's just impossible. So just... Cut that out. And I often find sometimes on a finer floral like this, Leaving a white border does make everything a little bit easier to cut out as well. So yes, I don't know whether I've said it. Happy 2024. Now at the Christmas it feels like a distant memory, doesn't it? And it's not, it's not that long ago. But once you've got that white border, it just looks beautiful, especially when I add some white on here. But it already looks a wonderful floral. So let's just leave that there and then we'll cut the next one out. But for me, that didn't take too long. And I just love the results. For me, it is worth it. And when I've finished the floral and we've added it to our card and we add the white splatters, etc., you'll see that it really works with the leaving a little white area on the petals just so it looks like it, it's shining. It really does work. It. So again, just cutting round those petals. The other funny thing in our house is that when it comes to the time of uploading the videos, I have to book my slot because my son plays on his game and if I upload the videos to YouTube, he moans about the speed. I can't do it in the day because my husband needs the speed for work. Honestly, I have to battle to try and find the time to sneak in loading videos. You'd think I didn't live here. Right, so let's just cut that out. I've got a Burns night uh, towards the end of January, 20 something. So I'm quite looking forward to that. That'll be nice. Right, there we go. Just cut down our stem. There we go. Let's bring in our florals. So we've now got two beautiful florals. Now let's add some of those touches of white.
because the touches of white will work really nicely just here just to make it a little bit more vibrant so let me show you one that i've not done and one that is done just adds to the overall effect effect so effect the effect mm. there we go so we just add and that white just makes everything pop a little bit more and i don't think i really need any more of that color at the moment you watch the minute i've wiped it up i'll say oh i just need a bit more of that color that's what i do all the time right let's just bend our card a little bit and let's have a little bit of so if you wanted to you can have quite a nice card with your two florals on there and nothing else but for me hmm, let's just grab so <clears throat> you can quite easily just place it on there and be quite happy but for me I might just add, let's just grab one of these clocks. So I've got my ephemera TikTok and it's hash 26 and there's lots of different clocks in there. And if I add this clock, that bold black sort of pops and lifts the florals up from the background a little bit. So I could place it a little bit more on the side like that. And it just sort of breaks it up a little bit. That works better for me. That's lovely. Now, if you wanted to do, you could add some glossy accents to that. But for me, I'm terrible. Glossy accents drive me mad. They're the bane of my life. They're beautiful, glossy accents is. When it's dry, you get like a domed effect to it. And it works beautifully. It's lovely. But the patience, it just drives me mad. Right, so I'm going to get some... A little bit of a text stamp so i'm going to use meander through beauty 1066 i'm just going to use the little text stamp on there which i'm going to faff trying to get it off for goodness sake right. let's take i can't remember which way up it is i think it's that way I could make it easy on myself and just test it, you know. But no, that would be too easy. Let me just test that just to make sure. Yeah. So I'm going to take the little, little text stamp, which is this stamp here, the little text stamp. And I'm going to add some of the text. Oh, just lovely just on there and what i like about the text is it's it sort of talks about florals and flowers so it's lovely now so this should be quite absorbent because this is like a a thick card the ephemera pieces are now i just cannot be patient enough to wait for the glossy accents so instead there we go so instead of using the glossy accents what i'm going to use is my wow embossing powder clear gloss and i've got the big pot so i'm just going to apply my versamark ink straight over the card and this is the lazy person's version now you do have to remember glossy accents give you that dome so you need to be aware of that so they give you that three sort of dimensional glossy feel you'll get a glossy finish with this but not so much the the sort of the domed feel but for me it's fine so we'll just tip that embossing powder back and you can sit i'll just drop it on the floor 
you can see that it's there because it's now gone a bit dull. So we'll heat the heat tool up. And what you should do is hold it in place because it really helps. Now normally what will happen is when you melt this, when it's hot, you can then tip the next layer on. I just have to see if I can do that without it blowing everywhere. If not, I'll have to apply the Versamark ink again. But you know when the emboss is, embossing is melting because it goes nice and shiny and glossy rather than flat. That should be okay. So just moving around. Try not to hold it in place just so I can tip the next layer on. So whilst this is nice and hot now, as I've melted it, I can then sprinkle the next layer on. Now, if you can't do that because of dexterity problems or issues, it doesn't matter. Just apply your Versamark ink again, which I'll also do it that way as well. So let's say that you can't, you can't do it that way. So you can then heat again for the second layer and it starts to melt I'll just lift that up a little bit see it start to melt it goes like glossy black rather than that matte so you get that glossy black now if you can't do it all in one go because you're all fingers and thumbs and everything all you need to do is let this cool down a bit but you can see I've now got that glossy finish. You could keep it like that so it's sort of not pure glossy, but sort of mottled and bumpy to give it a different effect as well. But what you need to do is put your hand on there and see how much heat is in there. If there's quite a bit of heat in there, give it a little waft. And then you can go back with your Versamark ink and go over again with that Versamark ink. Now, just remember this bumpy effect I've got. So let's place another layer of the embossing powder. So the actual clock now is getting sturdier and sturdier the more of that embossing powder that I add. And you can see it's moving less and less now because obviously it's heavier because I've got that embossing on there. Let's just apply that again. And it's up to you how many layers of that embossing you add. But I can still see it's still quite bumpy, so I can add another layer. Now with your glossy accents, you can add it sort of thick. It just takes like hours to dry. And I want results now. But we shouldn't always, you know, the glossy accents, you know, are beautiful and you get that sort of domed 3D effect. But I like this because it really gives your clock a really nice feel to it. Now I'm sort of, I'm quite happy with that. Let's just move that there. And then just make sure you move it off your copier paper because your copier paper will be a little bit sort of sticky. It'll have a sticky residue. So just move that out of the way and then move your embossing powder out of the way. Just gives you more room on your desk. And what you can see is you've got that lovely... I mean, you could have put another layer on. Well, I'm quite happy with that. It's lovely. Now, what you can do is you can place that in the fridge if you want so it's cold and then you can crack it. And then it looks like a really old clock. Let's 
let's just bend my card. Just tell it, you know, where I want it to be. And then I can have my clock just so it goes here. And that glossy really gives it a lovely finish. Right, let's grab some black cotton just to give me some texture and break up that background. The only problem is Tracy can never find the end from her cotton and it dries me. I'll I think I'll leave the end. There you go. So I'm just loosely pulling out the cotton so it's nice and loose. And if I pull it out nice and loose, let's pull that out a bit more so I'm not searching for that. As you can see, it's nice and loose. There's hardly anything to do then because I've pulled it out nice and loose and I can just sort of spread it out on the... And then I can decide, yeah. So I just need my pin flare. And the pin flare will hold that in the place because it's quite sort of thick. So it'll hold the clock in place and hold the fibres in place, but also give me some dimension as well. There we go. I'm just going to place that sort of there. There we go. But if you didn't want anything else on there, you could literally put a sentiment in a little beard and you wouldn't need anything else, would you? It'd just be lovely, really nice. So let's just bring my florals, which are going to go. I, honestly, I am terrible for faffing. But when I finish a design, it's important to me that it just looks right. And then when you're pleased with what you've done, then that's half the enjoyment. So what I'm going to do is just place a little bit of adhesive just on the stem so that we definitely catch that. She says, although she can't see the adhesive, is it on there? That's it. Now I was just being a bit pathetic. So let's just add a little bit. So I can just catch that adhesive there on the stem and then just press down lightly just so that's got some dimension. And again, just add some adhesive and just some of that pin flare. Just press that. I don't like to press it too much because I like the, I do like the dimension. Did I put any on there? Oh yeah. It's like I would question myself because I can't remember whether I've put it on. There's no way it really is there. So you can see, just looks lovely. Really does look lovely. Just gives it a nice sort of pop. And then I'm going to grab my A7 basket and just go through my stamps for my little bird, which to be honest, I've had that many stamps and I'm like, which one was it? There we go. And that's why I like keeping them in baskets and wallets because it just keeps everything organized. So I'm then going to use my quill ends, stamp set 908 and use this bird here. Grab a little bit of card. Don't think I need. Oh, that's got embossing powder on. That feels nice. One disadvantage: I just sprinkle embossing powder everywhere. So let's just take our little beard and nib. love I love creating no stress oh it's lovely there we go 
just so you can see the lovely bird. And I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to have the pen nib as well. Again, a little bit of a, a border. Just so that my little beard pops a little bit. I do love this beard. There we go. it so I've got my lovely beard now I'm going to want that to sit sort of down here like so because it's sort of balanced then and the black balances the black here so we'll put a little bit of pin flare on there again I can add a little bit of dimension because I could wrap this in tissue or a box or hand it to somebody. And then have we got any words on our miracle growth? There you go, perfectly. Shine bright, stay curious, just perfect. What else have we got? Stay curious, make, what, make it your moment. Stay curious and shine bright. Just perfect little sentiments. So let's just grab an A7 acrylic block, which has still got the sentiment on. Another little tip as well. You know, sometimes you might only add this little sentiment or a little mouse or something, and then your acrylic block rocks. If you've got another stamp set on the other end, it'll stop that rocking. So we'll just take the stay curious which doesn't need much ink I still need a desk space that's about 40 foot long so shine bright you don't need to press it too hard at all and then it will just cut that out take our sentiment and I can just make it a little sentiment because I can cut down the amount of card that we've got and it's entirely up to you where you put the shine bright I quite like it sort of within the little collage that we've created so I'm going to add a little bit of black Posca pen, which I'm making it quite hard on myself by doing it on the white card because you can hardly see the edge of the sentiment. But I'm trying to save myself some of the cleaning up just so that I'm not spending time cleaning up the surface. So that's got my shine bright with a little black faux black border around faux black matte and then i can just add this here so we'll just add a little bit of adhesive just on the edge and just add that there like so and then we'll just add some splatters and then we've nearly finished Let's just move it out a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to just then add some splatters to my card. And remember to move your card around. Just so that you hit different areas. Of your project 
And again, as always, I'm going to do something really you shouldn't. You should really wait until your splatters have dried. So this was six, it was four and a half by six and a half. I've then created a black mat four and three quarters by six and three quarters. I'm going to add that to my black mat again, which is pink frog black card. So it's a really good quality black card. Again, around about 300 GSM. You don't need to have 300 GSM, but I do like a card that's sort of sturdy and can hold up, can hold itself up and doesn't flop over. That's just me. Let me just make sure, just bend that card just so it makes good contact with the black card. And I can feel all the embossing powder that I've blown all over. So what I do is when I tidy up, I'll have to clean that up. So you've got your mat there and you can just see. You can't make it up, can you? The phone always rings when I'm on. So you can just see it's got all the dimension there. So I'm then going to add this to a white card blank, which is five and a half by seven and a half. And we'll add that to the card blank. And I always think when you add the mats and layers, it really does give a beautiful finished result. So let's add that to our white card blank. You just need to make sure that you just hold that down just so the adhesive grabs hold. And the Tonic Deluxe adhesive, adhesive does grab hold pretty quickly. So it's a good adhesive. So let's bring it in just so you can see. Oh, I just think that's lovely. Really looks lovely. And you've got all that dimension on there as well. But with that sort of pop of colour, it looks really lovely. Now that all came about because I created this card in the previous video. So from that card, I then developed this card, which We've also created, this is the background where I just did it with the ink pads for you. Just stunning. And let's just bring in this one that has got the cling film on it. So let's, yeah, I'd say it has taken some of the ink, but I'd say I've not pressed it on hard enough with the moisture. So I can... Take the moisture again, just, just, and this time, let's press that down, just to see. You will get, there's a little bit on there, I can see it, but, I mean, watercolour card works the best, but I will leave that on there. And if, if that gives me a good result, let's press that a little bit harder. I don't think I pressed it hard enough on the card. So I've pressed that quite hard on there, onto the card and added some more moisture. And hopefully we'll get some of those sort of lines and creases. And I can show you that in, either on social media or in another video, should that work. But you do get a nice effect with it. So just give that a try because you do get a lovely effect with it. But this is the card that we've created today. So I hope you've enjoyed the process and don't forget you've got this background as well. If you didn't want to add the embossed stenciling, you can just have it like this if you wish with the clock and the stamping on the top. Just beautiful. So I hope you've enjoyed those step-by-steps and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Love to all. Bye for now.